It's been a little bit, and I feel like I owe you guys a story, so sit back, because this one's a doozy. I was sitting on a beach in Senegal on the continent of Africa. For those of you guys who aren't up on African geography, Senegal is uh, on the western side of Africa. It's actually one of the countries that I think is like the most western country um, and closest to the, the western hemisphere. Americans don't really think of Senegal as much of a tourist spot. Uh, there's a lot of Europeans who like to go to the beaches of Senegal and hang out and chill out and enjoy the time. Now I was personally sitting on that beach in Africa at that time because I'd come over to visit my wife Allison. Allison had been away for about eight weeks. She was working in Dakar and a couple of other cities. I was living in New York at that time and I had a job and so I couldn't go over there with her and so she was over there. It was like a, I think it was like a four month assignment. This was like the two month mark and what we had done was coordinate it so that I would take a vacation and come out and visit her in the middle of her assignment. We decided to go down to a place called Mbor. It's a really nice sort of beach town, um, really world renowned for its beaches. Um, and you know, we figured it'd be a good place for us to just kind of hang out together and, and chill and enjoy each other's company. One afternoon, Allison had to deal with something I think it was related to her job. And so she wasn't going to be able to hang out with me that afternoon. So I had an afternoon to myself and I was just basically sitting on the beach and I'm the type of person who ever since I was like a little kid, I've hated the beach. I've always found it boring. I, it's just not my natural habitat. I mean, look, I thrive in a place like this. You know, a sandy hot beach, you know, in, in Africa is just, it's just not my thing. I just basically, when I'm out there, I just look like a sweaty panda bear on the beach and people look at me and wonder why the heck is this sweaty panda bear lying on the beach. It's just not a good scene for me. And I was really bored. Gosh, you know, I've come halfway around the world. I was hoping for some fun. I was hoping for some adventure. And here I am just bored reading a copy of the Wall Street Journal on the beach and just not feeling it. One of the things though that Allison had suggested to me before she went off to go do her work stuff was that I could go visit the fish market. Mbor has this renowned fish market where you know hundreds and thousands of people are coming to you know purchase fish and trade and exchange fish and you know it's just a bevy of activity it's one of those things that people always describe as a place of a lot of excitement and a lot of interest so i kind of figured what the heck let me go down to this fish market i look 
looked on a map and it looked like it was only about a mile or so away from the hotel that we were staying at. And so, you know, I walked out the front door of the hotel and started toward the direction of the fish market. I didn't walk maybe more than 15 steps past the barrier of the hotel. It had this like fence and gate and, you know, armed guards and, you know, kind of a standard uh, foreigner hotel in Africa type of setting. And I didn't walk maybe 15 steps out of the hotel when I was approached by a teenager, uh, really skinny, kind of short. He came right up to me and introduced himself. His name was the world famous Gabby De Maestro, and he wanted to know if I wanted to be taken on a tour to the fish market. I don't know, but this kid was like spot on. This was definitely what I was looking for. Um, you know, really, number one, uh, Senegal is a country that primarily speaks French and I don't speak any French whatsoever. And here this kid was coming right up to me speaking in English. I was like, wow, you know, having a tour guide who knows the area and speaks the language could be a really handy thing. So I asked him how much it would be for a tour. He told me that for the equivalent of five American dollars, he would take me around for the afternoon and, and show me the fish market and show me all the hidden places that they don't show the tourists and, and give all the inside views of everything. Given that I was just lamenting how boring this afternoon was and how unhappy I was with the experience, I said sure. Now this is somewhat unlike me. I don't necessarily look for adventure directly. I'm usually, uh, I don't know, a little shy about that type of stuff. I, you know, very distrustful of strangers, but I was feeling a little bit bored and adventurous that afternoon, but I said, okay, sure, let's do it, man. So Gabby whistles and waves. And then within about 30 seconds, a rickshaw that's attached to this rickety old bicycle pulls right up next to me and Gabby says, hop in. And so Gabby hops in the back, I hop in the back, and off we go down the street towards the fish market. Gabby's talking a mile a minute about this and that and asking me questions. Where are you from? What do you do? Blah, 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 blah. You know, going a mile a minute. I'm just trying to keep up and make my sense through his accent and try to understand what he's saying but I'm having a good time. I'm like really letting myself relax. I'm really starting to enjoy being in a very strange place, a place that's very different from where I had been living, as well as a place very different from where I'd come from. And it was just this awesome experience. And we eventually pull up to the fish market and we get out. And I was expecting it to be like, I don't know, like a, a structure and like, you know, a building and there'd be stalls and merchant stalls. But really all it was was a whole bunch of people congregating on a beach. There were blankets of women who had fish, you know, just out on the sand, sometimes on the blanket, you know, just all spread out, different types of fish piled in different clusters all over the beach. There were men pulling these long wooden boats up by hand and they were sort of carrying them off the water. They apparently go out like a couple of miles. I'm talking they're going in the Atlantic Ocean in rowboats. I'm just amazed seeing all the activity. Gabby takes me to the place where they actually build the boats and shows me that. Gabby's explaining to me the different roles and the different jobs that people have. I'm like taking pictures and just learning and observing. And it was just this incredible, incredible experience. The sights, the sounds, the energy. There were like these Japanese guys in like, um, like hazmat suits who were trading cash with uh, women and men on the beach buying up fish and Gabby explained it to me that they buy it for sushi that they ship all over the world. You know, I was just having like the best afternoon. You know, Gabby and I walked up and down the boardwalk a little bit. I ended up buying them a coconut and I bought a coconut and we're drinking coconut water right on the beach and it was just awesome and we were just having such a good time. Gabby and I, we're really bonded, man. Like, I like this kid's energy. He's just like a real like natural ham. He keyed in on the fact that because I was living in Brooklyn at the time, I must have known the Wu-Tang Clan. On guard. My Wu-Tang style. Um, and we started talking about hip hop and apparently, you know, in Senegal in the early 2000 teens, um, uh, their hip hop knowledge really stopped in 90s hip hop, which was really good because that's about where my hip hop knowledge also stopped. Here I go, deep tight flow, Jack you stole, can never get this low. And after about two hours, Gabby's like, so do you want to head back to your hotel? And I'm like, yeah, let's go, man. This was awesome. You did such a good job. And so we hop in the back of the rickshaw, the rickshaw takes us back to the hotel. But just as we're getting, you know, maybe two or 300 feet from in front of the hotel, the bike stops and Gabby says, that'll be $5. And I'm like, 
Dude, you earned it. I give the rickshaw driver the equivalent of 10 bucks. I give Gabby the equivalent of 20 bucks. Thank you so much. This was incredible. You totally made my afternoon. And just as I'm about to get out of the rickshaw, Gabby stops me and he pulls out a piece of paper from his pocket and he hands it to me. And, and I pull out the piece of paper and I unfold it and I look at it. And as I read it, my heart just sinks to the bottom of my stomach. Because the note says, you are now our hostage. I have two men with guns watching us. Please be quiet while we go to the nearest ATM. I, 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 I was like blown away by this. I, I look up, I look at Gabby. He looks really nervous and anxious. Like, you know, he really fidgeting, really anxious. And I, I don't quite know what to do about this. But I look at the note, I look at Gabby, I look at the rickshaw driver who's w looking at me too, and then I look at my hotel, which again, it's about 200 feet away. You know, they got the armed guards, the whole nine yards, all of that. And I take one last look at the note and I say, okay, close the note up, toss it at Gabby, and immediately run in the opposite direction. The guards look at me like I, I basically just try to explain to him this guy just tried to kidnap me and and i i'm just trying to get away and the guards look at gabby and the rickshaw driver and me and you know again here i am about you know 250 pounds you know and here he is like five foot three maybe 110 pounds and they're looking at me like they sort of chuckle and one of the guards explains to me that that ransom technique is actually this uh, scam that had been going on for years. And, you know, I was probably smart to just run away and that was the best move. But, but they were just chuckling seeing my big portly frame running towards the hotel. And while at first after all this happened, I was really mad because I was really mad at Gabby. I, Man, we had bonded. We're friends. We've been talking about 36 chambers. Cash fools, everything around me. But then as I thought about it, I realized, look, he's just trying to make a buck. I'm a guy who's been blessed with so much abundance in my life. Here he is trying to take just a little bit more of that. You know, while I don't have to yield to that, I also shouldn't resent it. And when it all comes down to it, it made for quite the adventure. Here I had been bored and bummed out that I was just sitting on a beach in, in Mbor, you know, feeling like no adventure ever comes my way. And then bam, here it comes, there's adventure. So if you're ever on a beach in Mbor, uh, Senegal, and somebody approaches you about a tour to a fish market, take them up on it, but uh, you know, maybe be a little bit careful. So I had a little story I wanted to tell you guys today. It's about the farmer who lives across the street from me. Oh shoot. Uh. Make sure the water doesn't overflow.